What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be talking about how to increase that power on the forehand, how to get more winners and more free pace. You guys seem to be all about how to be more aggressive in the other videos so let's keep with that theme and get right into it. So when we look at trying to increase the power on any of our ground strokes, especially the forehand, what we want to do is break it into three categories. And you can focus on any one of these to improve it. You can increase racket speed, you can improve your racket path, or you can improve the power sources. I'm going to go through all three in this video, starting with racket speed. So when we look to increase racket speed, it's broken into a very simple foundation. You need to have more segments in the motion, meaning you don't want everything to be really stiff. And then also you just want to keep everything loose all the way through. When I say break it into segments, if I lock my arm like this and I only swing from my shoulder, my racket speed is limited to the speed that my shoulder can move. But the more hinges you add, the faster the racket goes. But at the base of it, my shoulder hasn't increased its speed. I'm still moving my shoulder as fast as possible. But when I add that elbow in, now I've got more acceleration through at the end. When I add my elbow and my wrist in, when I, it happens again. When I add rotation, even though I'm not really going as fast as possible, you can see how at any level that's increasing your racket speed. Whether you are a brand new player or whether you have a bunch of experience, the more you can time these segments, the easier it'll be to increase that speed. So I'm just going to use the ball machine here and I'll just show an example. When that ball comes in, if I go stiff, yeah, I can keep the ball deep, but that's as fast as that ball is going to go. I'm going to add my elbow in here and that racket's already accelerating a little bit more. And I'm still not really using my wrist yet. When I add the wrist in, you can hear the difference in the sound of that ball. Again, my shoulder speed hasn't increased at all. My rotation of the body is adding that power. So just by getting the proper pieces to break at the right time, anybody can increase their racket speed fairly easily. Looking at part two, when we talk about racket path, you can actually still incorporate the stuff we did from part one, which is maintaining or increasing your acceleration. But now all we're doing is paying more attention to the path the racket's traveling when you go fast. If you want power in the shot, you need to actually decrease the amount of rotation you have in the ball, i.e. going from like a heavy forehand to a flatter forehand. What, the reason you do that is that shows where the energy is actually being prioritized. If I want to hit with a lot of spin and I swing full speed, my racket path is going to go almost perfectly vertical, but I'm not going to have a lot of forward momentum at the same time. If I want to increase my power, I have to take that vertical path and start to tilt it more and more forward until I have 100% power and 0% spin, basically. Now, obviously, you want to play with the fractions or play with the percentages to what's comfortable for you. But if you can take your racket in a perfectly horizontal path, that's going to be 100% force. And then depending on the actual racket speed that you use, that'll dictate how fast the ball goes. But if I'm a person who swings moderately slow, but my swing is also very, very vertical, I can increase my power just by taking that same slow swing and taking my racket path more forward. So let's do a couple demonstrations of that one and again you'll see the difference and my goal is going to be to not change my racket speed at all. So again with the racket speed remaining pretty much the same this is a vertical swing path going at that moderate speed for me. Vertical swing path you don't see a lot of force in that shot. That swing goes up and it's not a bad shot but it's not necessarily super fast. But if I take that same swing speed and take it linear, now I'm hitting through the court and you can see my ball made it to the curtain. And I'm not swinging harder. I could swing harder, but that would defeat the purpose of using this as the way you improve your power. So again, I'm swinging super moderate, but you can see the difference in the path of the ball. Now if I wanted to go from my level, that clearly increased the speed of the ball. But again, all I did was take a swing that usually goes down and then up and just took it and made it more horizontal. 
no matter what level you are, that is the way to increase power without necessarily changing the amount of power you have to generate with your body. This last one may be a little challenging for some people with physical limitations, but to the best of your ability, most people can implement it. This is the one where we talk about where you get your power from. So you've got a couple of main power sources. You've got the legs, which you push up into. You've got the core, which rotates. And then you've got this shoulder and basically all the segments of the arm. If you can chain those together in the right order, you increase the maximum amount of power you can get. I always say start from the ground up, meaning everything you do always has to have a good base. Even if you have terrible technique, pushing up at the right time will increase the amount of force that you have through the ball. And if you can get everything kind of firing in the right sequence, it will drastically improve the amount of power you have. But what I want you guys to do is use these two words, drop and drive, or the sink and push. They're, they mean the same thing, but what you want to feel like you're doing is letting your weight rest and fall in. You don't just want to bend down. You want to feel that weight kind of settling into the leg first. Once you feel that tension, then you push up into it. Way too many people think if they bend their knees, they're gonna hit the ball harder, but it's a timing thing. You want the legs to be loading and then pushing up into the shot. Like I said, some people, knee issues, back issues, that can be a little bit difficult, but to your own level, getting this to sink in at the right time and then push up at the right time will make a huge difference. So I'm gonna show you guys an example of that one now, and that's gonna be it. So using that sink and push, you can see my racket speed is pretty much the same. But once I drop down and then push up into it, that increases the amount of racket speed I have. Down and then through. Now as you can see, that changes the timing you're gonna have. If you're used to swinging slow, you're gonna end up having to readjust how much time you have in this load and then push up at the right time. But as you can see, that ends up making me push up. The big mistake people make when they do this one is they treat it like a bounce. They just go down and up, down and up. There's gotta be a lull in the motion before you get that going in. You wanna make sure you feel yourself really sinking down and then pushing up into it. That bounce will actually get you in trouble because people will have trouble controlling the amount of racket speed. But once you get the feeling, that load really helps you explode up into the shot. And then as a result, you're getting power without necessarily increasing the amount of effort you're putting into it. You're just generating force from another area. But, left-handed backhand, yeah. But, remember, the bounce is the biggest mistake people make. They think that because they just bend down and come up, it's gonna work. You gotta really feel the weight settling for a second. If you don't have that weight settled down into the legs, you can't redirect it. It's like jumping rope versus doing a squat jump. You can use residual bouncing to keep yourself going. However, you're not really getting any more force. You're just rebounding. When you get that weight settled in, you choose how much energy you're gonna have in the output. But that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. I hope you felt that that was a little bit helpful. If you really wanna work on getting more force, you have to take these things and apply it both on a ball machine or with a hitting partner or in match play. But what I always say is you want to focus on working on one of these Get that really drilled into the body first and then add into it. Don't go on court and try and do all these at the same time. But that's gonna wrap it up. Send this video to somebody if you think they benefit from it, but we'll see you guys in the next one.